So, in Philippians 2, are you there? So, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill you my joy that you may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than himself. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Now, you have your Bible with you? What does it say? Let this, let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Hallelujah. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things on earth and the things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you, both to do and to will, and to do his good pleasure. Do all things. Can I, can I hear you say all things? Do all things without murmurings and disputings. Verse 15, so that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and a perverse nation, amongst whom you shine as lights in this world. I think this is probably the most important scripture that I've read this year. Because you need to be presented blameless, and harmless, the sons, who, whose son are you? So that means you are the light of this world. You need to be presented in this world as blameless, yeah. harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and a perverse nation, amongst whom you shine as lights in this world. Now, just stop there for a second. We go into this world and what is the first thing we do when we go into pick and pay or we throw in petrol, especially when the petrol price goes up? And that happens like twice a week, I think, almost. <laughs> How many times do we murmur and complain with the people of this world about what's happening in this world? But just see how easy it is to fall into murmurings, complainings, and disputings. Amen. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. I love Eric, you blessed me on Sunday just after the service about something that needed to happen the next day and realizing that everything I do, I must do without murmuring. Because Man, it doesn't matter how much they're going to start charging for a unit of electricity. It doesn't matter how much they're going to start charging for a liter of petrol. Amen. Because your father owns everything. But once you get stuck in what they are doing, Amen. then you are looking at the world to supply what you need. You. Our supply does not come from this world. You, Our supply does not come from ESCOM or Sassel, or whatever it is. These are just things. They are just things. Just say this after me, just things. There are things and there are just things. Remember Luke 10, touched it on last week, Martha and Mary. Man, Martha goes to Jesus and says, man, I'm doing everything, and my sister is just sitting at your feet. <laughs> Tell her to come help me, he says, Martha, you keep yourself busy with things while you should be keeping yourself busy with the things of God. Amen. Don't let these things take your mind off of the things of God. 
What things takes your mind off of the word of God? Let's talk about the Israelites. You know those guys. The chosen people of God, man, they were in captivity in Egypt. God sends Moses. He says, I'm going to deliver you. He does all the wonders, shows them um, God's power at work with Pharaoh. I mean, yo, just imagine seeing all those things happening up until the point where you have to leave. So there are 10 plagues that hits your enemy. Like these are not just ESCOM putting the lights off. <laughs> this is some hectic stuff. So you see all of that stuff while having the word of God is, I'm going to take you to the promised land. I'm going to provide for you all the way. I am taking you. God is taking you to the promised land. So they see all these things happening, yet they go into the desert. And after a while, they start murmuring and complaining. What does that do? Murmuring and complaining nullifies the faith that you have in God because then you do not believe in his word. So in fact, the Israelites did not believe that God can take them to the promised land anymore. Just because of their murmurings and their complaining. So am I taking away that we won't feel anything happening? Yes, we will feel the petrol price going up. Yes, we will feel ESCOM. Yes, we will feel these things. But again, the word of God says that you will not be tempted above what you can handle. And in every situation, God is working it for your good and for your benefit. We find it in Romans. <laughs> Everything works together for your good, for those who love God. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Eric. So that you may be blameless and harmless, holding forth the word of life, that you may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, and if I have offered up sacrifices and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For same cause also do you joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I may also be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things. Huh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Talking about things. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. But you know the proof of him that as a son with a father, he has served me in the gospel. Him therefore I hope to send presently so soon as I shall how it will go with me. But I trust in the Lord that I also send myself shall come shortly. Yet I suppose it necessary to send you Aphrodite, my brother and companion in labor and fellow soldier, but your messenger and he that ministered to my ones. Okay, then he carries on. So what is this about? It's about holding forth the word of life and looking onto the things of Jesus Christ. What is the things of Jesus Christ? Ah, beautiful. Colossians 2, it says, For I would that you would have great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be comforted, being knit together in love, unto all the riches and the full assurance of the understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ, in whom, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Ha <laughs> ha. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. <laughs> man, this is good. For thou art be absent in flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and steadfast of your faith in Christ. As you have therefore received Christ the Lord, so also walk in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophies and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of this world, 
and not after Christ. Because they seek their own things and not the things of Christ. Man, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophies, vain deceits, after the traditions of men and after the rudiments of this world. Why? Because they are seeking their own things. If someone tries to put you into a box saying you must, (laughs) then it means they are not seeking Christ. They are seeking their own. Because where Christ is, there is freedom. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are what? Come on, church. You are complete. That means there is nothing lacking within you. Look at your neighbor. Just look at how complete he is. He's perfect. Maybe some of us have a few limbs missing, but you are still perfect. (laughs) You are still complete. Not by yourself. In him. Remember, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge is within Christ Jesus. How did you receive Christ Jesus? Did you pay anything to become like Christ? Christian? Christian meaning like Christ? No, you believed. How do you believe? Through faith. All right, so let's talk about faith quickly. What is faith? Is faith a spiritual force that is at work within you and you don't know how it works? It just, it's just there? It produces things for you? No, faith is in the way that you think. Faith is a mindset. How did you receive Christ in your mind? You didn't receive him into your body. You received him into your mind because, oh man, come on. You know, we are all exactly the same. If I compare Eric with myself, yes, he has all his limbs. He has 10 fingers, I have 10 fingers. He has two feet, you have all your toes. He has 10 toes, I have 10 toes. We can go through the whole anatomy and we are similar. Our body functions the same. If we eat certain foods, our bodies are gonna function the same. Nothing is different between me and him, but yet we are two different people. What makes us different? Our mindsets. So this is just a fleshly body. This is just a vessel. But what makes you unique is your mind. So where is your faith? It is in the way that you think. Come on, come on. It says you are complete in him. Now I'm getting back to let this mind, let this mind that was in Christ be in you. Your brain is not your mind. Your brain is just the vehicle that fuels your thoughts and your mind. Your mind is the ability to have the thoughts that you have that essentially makes who you are. Have you noticed that everyone here is dressed differently this morning? Why, because it's your thoughts that made you dress that way this morning. If we were exactly the same copy and paste, all of us would have looked the same this morning. We would have a polo or a Nike shirt or something, like that's just it. But We are one in Christ, right? We are like-minded in Christ, amen? Why are we all still different? Because everyone has a different mind. I love what he says, he says, let this mind. And I think when we read that, we think about the brains of Jesus. But let this mindset that was in Jesus be in you. Let the thoughts that was in Jesus be your thoughts. Because everyone is minding the things of their own and not the things of Jesus Christ. And upon just meditating on this word, I came to the point of realizing that everything Jesus did was intentional. 
Whenever you read him of going out, challenging the Pharisees, healing the sick, whatever he did, it was intentional. He didn't just stumble across some blind people. He knew there's going to be blind people. He didn't just started preaching and the Pharisees came. He knew the Pharisees were going to come. I'm going to prove this to you. He was intentional. So, I've heard this phrase in the church that they say, I have blind faith. I just go and whatever happens, I have faith for it. And I don't believe in such a thing. Because if we have the mind of Christ, that means when I go out, I'm intentional knowing that I am a son of God. I am a light to this world. So wherever I'm going to go, I'm going to need to do something. I need to do something without murmurings (laughs) and disputings. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So you are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and powers, in whom also you are circumcised, uh, made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him, through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead, and you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way by nailing it to his cross. Thank you, Jesus. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of holiday or of the new moon or of Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. And let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head from which all the body, by joints and hands, having nourishment, ministered, and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God. Woo! Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of this world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to the ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which are all to perish with the using, after the commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed a show of wisdom in worship with humility and neglecting of the body and not in the honor and the satisfying of the flesh. Now we're going to jump to Colossians 3. So if you then be risen with Christ, ha, huh, okay. So Christ died and we died with him, buried with him, and he removed everything that was against us. So now if we are risen with him, seek those things which are above. Come on. Seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on the things of the earth. Let's go to Matthew 6. It says, lay not treasures up for yourself on earth where moth and rust do corrupt, where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where these things do not happen. Because where your treasure is, There your heart will be. I want to just rephrase that and say, it's not where your treasure is, but what what is your treasure? You see, we can run after a treasure or we can know what is our treasure. We can spend our lives chasing things or we can spend our life in things because all things belong to God. Instead of chasing the things, I can merely just live. And enjoy the things. Man, how how many people do you know, they spend their whole lives chasing something and they never find it? How long have you been chasing something and can't seem to attain it? 
How many of you have had a problem and by all your stress and anxiety trying to solve it, nothing happened? And then out of the blue, when you were not thinking of it at all, the solution comes. Maybe lying on your bed or doing nothing. And then all of a sudden this thought comes to your mind. It's like, ah, I haven't tried that. And that becomes a solution. Why? Because you're not focused on the thing anymore. <sighs> Set your affection. Ah. I'm just going to jump to the amplifier quickly. Set your minds <laughs> and keep them set on things that is above, the higher things and not on the things of the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Verse 4, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then also we shall appear with him in glory. Okay. Just stop there for a second. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. So set your mind on things above. Man, yo, yo. Just verse one. Seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated. Set your mind and keep them set on things above. Because when Christ shall appear, then you shall appear with him in glory. How did you get saved? You believed. You believed through faith. Where is your faith? The faith is in your thoughts. This belief is in your thoughts. Faith and disbelief can be nothing of your body. This is just a natural vessel. But these things are born in your thoughts and they become your truth. So now it says, set your mind and keep it set on things above. Then when Christ shall appear, where does Christ appear? In your thoughts. When you are mindful of God, your mind becomes full of God. And essentially, whatsoever a man thinketh, he iseth. Original King James. Yeah. <laughs> Whatsoever comes up in the heart of man yeah. is what he will become. Because what the heart is full of, the mouth speaks. We know that. So where does the heart get his material? Your heart doesn't have a mind. Your heart gets fed by your mind. The thoughts that we have produces the things that we see in our lives. Now, we have a spirit man. Do you have a spirit man? Yes, you do have a spirit man. Otherwise, you were a ghost. You're a, you're a soul, mind, spirit. You can't take one of these away. Otherwise, you are dead. As you are, all of you look alive. Can I see smiles? I want to see teeth. Your spirit man is responsible for creating the things in your life. Now, I've read a couple of books, uh, The Power of the Subconscious Mind. It says, whatever you plant in your subconscious will eventually show up in your life because that's how you work. Your spirit man is in control. Your subconscious man is the one bringing things into your life. If you don't know that, <laughs> your subconscious mind is fed by no one else but you. The thoughts that you have eventually goes into your subconscious mind where your spirit man is alive and brings in those things that you give him to bring in. All right, I'm not busy with some guru stuff here. Yeah? I'm busy with the word of God. Because if we have the spirit of God, that is essentially God that brings into our lives what we need because God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Now, by all your trying, your natural man and your soul man, you will not be able to produce the things of God because it is the spirit man that produces the things after the spirit of God. 
How is that spirit man fed? By your thoughts, by the way you think. Man, you are the one programming your subconscious. Whew. You like it. I like it too. So when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then also shall he appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinance, affection, evil, conspicuous, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience, in the which you also have walked sometimes when you lived in them. But now you also put off these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Should I read that again? <laughs> okay, so he says, <laughs> in which you also walked sometimes when you lived in it, them. What is that? A lower form of thinking, below the line thinking. When your mind was below the line, you were living below the line. But when your mind is above the line, you are living. So you are living where you are thinking. If you have received Christ, so walk in him. As you have received Christ, so walk in him. How did you receive Christ? With your mind. You believed and he became the Lord of your heart. So why, why do we now want to serve God through rituals and traditions and things? We can come to church every day of the week. We can serve with our bodies, but our minds can be far from him. We can sit here in church. We can sit here in the worship, in the presence of God. You have the ability to enter into behind the veil because the door has already been opened to you. But yet you can just be in a place in Stilfontein in a building made with hands and not experience the presence of God. So that brings me to the question, where are you? You are where your thoughts are. Your mind <laughs> is the fastest thing in this world. It can go forward and backwards in time. It can travel distances in seconds. My brother Yaku, he has just been in America and if I have a picture of somewhere that he has been, I can take him there and he can tell me exactly what he did there, how it was, what the temperature was. He can even describe the smell to me. That means he's there. He's already there, but he's still present here. We can sit in this house have the word of God preached to us week after week, but still not experience his presence. Because our thoughts are not, okay, our thoughts are his thoughts, right? Let me just correct that. You guys are amazing. I can see the words falling into your hearts. Let's put off these things. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. And I've put on the new man. All right. Great. Woo. Can I get a whoop whoop? Bump your neighbor, say, wake up. We're going somewhere. It says, lie not one to another. What is a lie? A lie is just a story that is not true. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. Now, I don't know how many of you has an old man in your cupboard there at home. It's like we're going to church, let's take the old man off. Put him there, come back from church, put him back on. Hey, there we go. How do you put off the old man? And have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is 
renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. You have put on the new man by the renewed mind. Okay. Beautiful thing about renewed is we are stuck in a, in, in a time-sensitive realm. Yeah? You don't believe me? Look at your watch. Every second that passes, the new is old and the new is new. The new is old and the new is new. So to be renewed is not, ah, my mind is renewed, great. I'm now in the image of God, I'm good, I'm happy to go. Yeah, the angels sing and the doors of heaven open up and ladder comes down so I can walk up and be with my father. No, it doesn't work like that. To be renewed in your mind means every single thought that you take, you must think on the things above. Every single day that you go into, you do things without murmurings and complainings because you need to be blameless. You need to be pure. It takes a renewing of your mind not to be offended in this time because every single thing out there wants to offend you. Even in the body of Christ, I've never seen so much offense than in the body of Christ. Why? Because we still have the old man in the cupboard. <laughs> it's easy to pick him up. Put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. <laughs> Man, just look at your neighbor and say, I forgive you. I don't know for what, but I forgive you. <laughs> just start practicing it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. When the disciples asked Jesus, how many times was when you forgive? Seven times. He says, no, 70 times seven. The disciples answered Jesus. He said, oh Lord, increase our faith. Because if I am justified by what I do and I'm offended in that, I will not forgive the person that offended me because I am right. We always stand for what is right. But we don't step down and say, let me just look at your things as well. Why are you this offended? How can I help? Forgive me if I have asked or caused this offense. Even if I didn't even do it, forgive me. If there's something I didn't know, forgive me. But if we, if we ask forgiveness, it means that we were wrong. And we as people, we don't like to be wrong. True? Uh, it's just me. It doesn't matter about being wrong or right. It matters about where's your thoughts. Because if your thoughts are above the line, you can never be wrong. Set your mind and keep them set on Christ Jesus, seated in heaven. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy, beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humility, and humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, also do you. And above all these things, and above all these things, Put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Ah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now it says, you are perfect in him. Having put off the old man and put on the new man by the renewed mind, knowing that we must not be conformed to this world, but we must be transformed by the renewing of your mind. My goodness, 
Do you know you have a renew button in your mind? Some of you haven't pressed it in like 40 years already. Still stuck in uh, 1998. So we know that God wants to give you the desires of your heart, right? You have 20 scriptures to confirm that God wants to give you the desires of your heart. But yet you don't get these desires because you can get the desires of your heart as long as your desires are in the heart of God. It's not where your treasure is. It's what is your treasure. Christ is our treasure. Because in Him is hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge means everything. So instead of chasing after things, start chasing after Christ. Uh, But Peter, how do you chase after Christ? Where is your mind? And I believe it's it's summed up here in verse 14. It says, above all these things. We've touched about things and things, and then we've touched about things. And then there are more things. The further go in life, the more things there will be. Everything will just be more things. But above all things, put on love. For that is the bond of perfectness. Oh, thank you, Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11, if I started, you're going to know the rest. For I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Not to harm you. Do you know what a plan is? A plan is a thought. It's an idea. It's something that does not exist yet. But you can see it. You know, if you want to go for funding for a business project or something like that, what do they ask for? Lucas? A business plan. Where is your business plan? Where is your proposal? Where is, give me the picture of what you're seeing and what you want. Let me see what you see, because what you see will become your future. You cannot create if you do not see it. So a plan is something that is written down. It's not something that exists yet. So I know the plans. God is saying, I know the plans. I'm having thoughts of you. I'm seeing you in the future. What is your plans? What is your thoughts about yourself? Oh, Lord. Now we just sit back and say, oh, God, you have plans for me, so I can just relax. I don't have to do anything. uh, You know, he says the kingdom is like a man going on a journey, and he gives his servants ten, five, and one talents, and he expects them to double when he gets back. He says, I'm coming back, and I'm going to take what is mine, and I'm going to see what you have done, what I have given you. But we go into this life saying, oh, God, it's your plan, so I don't have to do anything. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. Do you know the plans that I have for you? Because if we have the mind of Christ, then we need to know the plans that God has for us so that we can see it, speak it, and bring it into our lives. Are you in Luke 5? So it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret, Genesaret, yeah, that one, and saw two ships standing by the lake. Two fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed to him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. All right. How many of you have heard the word of God? Your spirit was filled with something that you need to do. And your response was, Master, I have toiled all night 
and I've taken nothing. Hearing this word this morning saying, yes, I've heard that. I heard that I must see, speak, believe. I've heard that. But I have toiled all these years. I have been speaking all these years, yet I have received nothing. <laughs> Nevertheless, at whose word? I will let down the net. Nevertheless, at your word. My goodness. Set your mind on things above and keep them set. Do not let your experiences of the past 20 years keep you from experiencing what God has in mind for you. Amen. Simon, we're talking about, yo, just, yo, 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 all right. He was fishing all night long, catch nothing. Jesus says, just cast down your nets. How many times do we feel the unction of the Holy Spirit to just knock once more, just phone once more, Amen. just wake up once more, just try once more, just smile once more to this person? And we say, nah. Nah, nah, that person, he must go to hell. I, I don't have time anymore for him. Because I've tried so many times and nothing has happened. Yeah. Yeah. Let this mind be in you. Oh, thank you, Father. It says, let this mind be in you. So he says, nevertheless, doesn't matter what I experience. And I, I, want, I want you guys to, to have this attitude today. Yes. You can, you can say I've done all of this and I have no thing. But do not stop there. Say nevertheless, God, according to your word, I will do it. Yes. Nevertheless, not, doesn't matter what I've experienced, what I've lost, according to your word, I will do it. Yes, man. And they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. <laughs> My goodness. You see what happens when you do something according to his word. Sometimes the ideas that we have, they are God given, but then we go according to our word. We start murmuring and complaining. And we start thinking that I am almighty and all powerful. And I am the one that's going to complete this. And then we forget that it is he who started the good work. Is the one that will perform it and complete it. All you need to do is just have the right mind. Have the mind of Christ. What does Jesus say? He says, I do nothing. I do nothing except the Father shows me and tells me. Whew. According to the word of God, man, the ships began to sink. Should I end off in this? It says the plans that I have for you, the thoughts that I have for you, 
What is the plans and what is the thoughts? Let's jump down to verse 17. Luke 5, 17. And it came to pass on a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And they could not find by the way they might bring him in because of the multitude. They went up from the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw, whose faith? Their faith. I want to tell you where their faith comes from. They had a friend and they knew the Spirit of God was present to heal So how are we going to get our friend to the Spirit of God? They started making plans. They started thinking of ideas. Let's cut open the roof. Let's bring him down on a couch. It's not faith that made these things. It's their ideas and their thoughts that brought the person into the presence of Jesus. Man, faith... It's not just a spiritual form that is there, it is the ability to think. Faith is so real as your thoughts are. Ah, he says, and he saw their faith and said unto them, man, your sins are forgiven you. Now I believe Jesus could have just said, be healed. I'm telling you, whatever Jesus did was intentional. He knew (laughs) the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes were over there. What are they famous for? For their philosophies, their religious rudiments, and all these things need to do in order to get. Need to obey the law, and then you receive. Where God is just believe and receive. So Jesus... um, The scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, verse 21, who is this who speaks blasphemies, who can forgive sins, but God alone? Okay, verse 22, are you there? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering and said unto them, why do you reason in your hearts? Through all the translations that I've read is these guys did not verbally say this. They were thinking this and God reveals their thoughts. Two things are happening here. The guy that was sick, his friends had faith. They had ideas. They were mindful of his healing. And Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. According to your faith, his sins are forgiven. Then the Pharisees comes. And what are they thinking? It's like, ah, what is this guy? How can he forgive someone? Uh, Let's just go back to Colossians 3. Above all, put on love. The verse just before that, forgive even as Christ forgave. The Pharisees is like, hmm, mm mm-mm. And Jesus knew their thoughts. My goodness. Whew, hallelujah. Thoughts is a dangerous place. You can smile at me and have the worst thoughts of me. (laughs) Corinthians 2 Here at the end it says, no one knows what is in the heart of man except the spirit of a man. No one knows what you are thinking right now, but God, he knows. Your thoughts cannot be hidden. And believe me, you are in control of your thoughts. You can't tell me that, no, this is, I am not in control of my thoughts. Evil thoughts will knock at your door. 24-7. 
Seven days a week, 365 days a year. What do we start this sermon with? The devil has no power over you. All he wants to do is take your thoughts off of the things of God. He just wants to distract you. How? Negative thoughts. Negative thoughts about the person next to you, more likely about yourself. About your deficiencies, about your lacks, about where you've missed it. Have you missed it this week? Many times. I confess. Forgive me, Father. (laughs) It's not about how many times I miss it or how many times I make it. It's about do I really believe that he who started the good work in me is the one that will perform it. All I need to do is keep my mind set. Yes. My goodness, my goodness. Okay, so Jesus tells these guys, so why, why are you reasoning in your hearts? What is easier to say? Your sins be forgiven you, or rise up and walk. But that you may know the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of palsy, I say unto you, arise, take up your couch, and go into your house. And immediately he rose up before them, and he took his house, and there he went. The Son of Man has the power to forgive sins. I want you to move over to Hebrews 4. Jesus knew what they were thinking. Jesus knows what you are thinking. Are you thinking above or below? Philippians 4, it says, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. It's a choice. It's a choice. I'm married and I can use my wife as an example, can I? Yes, great, amen. Wherever there are people, we have misunderstandings. We can take one misunderstanding and build our own story and narrative around that misunderstanding. And we can color it in so much that a friendship that was close today can be as far as the east as from the west tomorrow. And yet, physically, nothing happened. In a marriage, there are sometimes misunderstandings. I can misunderstand my wife or interpret something wrong that she said to me. And me, being one that loves peace and wants to make everything right, I can add my own things in and start accusing myself of where I've missed it and then build this big issue about something that does not actually exist. It affects my well-being, it affects my attitude, it affects my personality. But yet I have my wife that I know she loves me, so why is this thing there? It's because I'm focusing on what I have maybe done wrong. thinking that it's all in the mind. I'm talking about marriage. Yes, I married my wife because she's the most beautiful woman. There's no one prettier than her. She's kind, she's loving. I love her with my whole heart. When I went into marriage, there wasn't anything else except I wanted to be with my wife. I was blessed of meeting her at a very young age. 
And a lot of things happened in between. But when I knew she's my wife, I was going to give everything to get her. The greatest battlefield we have is up here. And we have already had the victory. Thanks be to God who always gives us victory through Christ Jesus. That's why he says, put on this mind. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hebrews 4. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still holds and is offered today, let us be afraid. I'm reading the Amplified. To distrust it, lest any of you should think he has come too late and has come too short of reaching it. Um, come on, this, I, I, this is where you must start getting it. Lest any think he has come too late. There is a rest that has been prepared for you. Come on, guys. If I just look at your faces, we need that rest of Christ. We need that place where we are refreshed, where we are renewed, where Psalms 23 is an actuality in our lives. It's actuality a word, yes. Great. It's not too late. Do not think it's too late. For indeed, we have had the glad tidings of the gospel proclaimed to us just as truly as they have Israelites of all dead when the good news of deliverance from bondage came to them. But the message, oh, come on, they heard, did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith. The message they heard did not benefit them because they did not apply it and made it part of their thoughts. Come on. I explained to you what plans is, what faith is. It's merely thoughts. It did not benefit them because they did not make it part of their thinking. If you do not make the promise of God part of your thinking, you're not going to receive it. You can't just say, thank you, Jesus, for the promises, and then put it on a paper there on the table, and then 20 years from now say, Jesus, I did not receive your promise. And Jesus says, but you did not make it part of your thinking. How are you going to get it? I've heard of people that really receives the prophecies that are spoken over them. And if you go into those people's life, you'll find that they have a book where they write it down. They go over it. They read it every now and then. They make it part of their lives. So when it comes, it's of no surprise because it is part of the plan for their lives. I know the plans that I have for you. Do you know the plans that I have for you? Come on, guys. Because it, they did not mix it with faith. With the leaning of the entire personality on God and absolute trust and confidence in His power, wisdom, and goodness. But those who have heard it, neither were they united in faith with the ones, Joshua and Caleb, who heard and did believe. For we who have believed, adhered to, and trusted in, and relied on God, do enter that rest, according with His declaration that those who did not believe should not enter when He has said, As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And this he, he said, although his works had been completed and prepared and waiting for all who would believe from the foundation of the world. For in a certain place he has said above the seventh day, God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And they forfeited their part in it. For in this passage he says, they shall not enter my rest. Seeing then that the promise remains over for some to enter into that rest. And those who formerly were given the good news about it and the opportunity failed to appropriate it and not to enter because of disobedience. And again, say again, 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 again. again. <laughs> he says a definite day, a new day, puts on the new man. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Sure. 
and gives another opportunity of securing that rest, saying through David after so long a time in the words already quoted, today, if you would hear his voice and when you hear it, do not harden your hearts. This mention of a rest was not reference to entering into Canaan, for if Joshua had given from them rest, he, God, would not speak afterward about another day. So then there is still waiting a full and complete Sabbath rest reserved for the true people of God. For he who has once entered God's rest also has ceased from the weariness and the pain of human labors. Ah, come on. Do all things without murmurs and complaining, knowing it is God who worketh in you to do His will and His pleasure. He is the one that strengthens you to do all things. <laughs> Believing that He who started the good work in you is faithful and true to complete it. And then we enter into the rest. Where? In our minds. Just as God rested from those labors. You know, as long as there is things troubling your mind, there is no rest. Things and rest is like, you know, when you have two magnets, strong magnets, and you try to put the opposite sides next to each other, they repel each other. The cares of this world and the rest of God is like those two sides they will never be able to touch one another. Okay. And then he carries on and says, the word of God is sharper than two-edged sword, dividing asunder between the thoughts and the intents of a man's heart. Now I'm saying, <laughs> the rest of God and the things, the cares of this world. If we go to Matthew 6, here at the end, he says, take no thought what you shall eat or what you shall drink, or wherewith you shall be clothed. Take no thought, okay? Yeah. Remember I gave you the example of your mind, you can be anywhere. God has plans for you, the plans is the picture of your future. That's why he says, take no thought what you shall eat, what you shall drink. Because if you take the thought, that is what you are making in your life. Come this week, whatever bills you need to pay, how many times do we spend so much time about the source that we need to pay at the end of this month knowing that we don't have the money? Yeah. <laughs> and when the time comes to pay the source, guess what? Money. You don't have the money. Because you've been thinking you don't have the money. <laughs> but when you put that aside and you start thinking on the things above, you start having rest. I don't know about you, but it's not a lovely place not to have rest in your mind. It happened this week with me. Testimony. After Sunday, I'm fired up. My mind is full of faith. I'm going to do this. And uh, it was the end of the month, right? So I'm a, I'm a partner of this house, and I've made sure that my partnerships goes off before my debit orders. Then God and all the other things comes off. So yeah, by the time, I don't think we've even reached the first yet. I don't know what happened, but I don't have an overdraft account on my stand bank, but it went into the minus. And not a small amount, so I'm like, I look at it, I'm like, you know what God, you started the good was gonna complete, I'm not gonna, come. I'm not, even, I'm not gonna worry about this thing. So I close it, I don't even look at my other things. And I carried on the week that everything that I needed to do was able to do all things. By the end of the week, that minus turned into a plus. I could have spent Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday making plans in order to... Because, you know, if you don't have an overdraft, that minus is just going to escalate because Standard Bank doesn't like giving you money that is not yours. <laughs> Newsflash. No bank does. They like borrowing you money. But in saying that, I just want to bring you to it. There is a, there's a rest.
I have a, I have a, a file full of problems. Running this house, running this school, financially, I have a file full of headaches that I can pick up any day and spend my time on it. But when I look at the things that we need to do, I still have rest because I know, God, you called us to do this. So I'm not worried about what these things say. I'm still going to carry on. Because according to your word, I've been working for the past seven years. I've been doing the past seven years. Nevertheless, according to your word, according to your word, we stay open. According to your word, the word will continue being preached. According to your word, people are still getting healed. According to your word, people are still getting free. Thank you, Lord.